What's up, guys? John here. Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. So this segment is pretty popular, I guess, with uh, couples all out there. We always get a lot of uh, questions and feedback about this segment. Um, so we just go in, in detail of, you know, what's worked best for us or some of the different things that we've done to help our relationship, A, stay ignited, make sure that flame is still there, and uh, B, try to keep progressing and try to take that relationship higher and higher and make sure that it develops into something even better than what it is because you can always be better in whatever you're doing. So I think these topics are really good for today. Um, they're good for relationships. I think they're good for bonding as far as relationships. I think it, it, it starts the trust factor and gets a trust factor there. Um, and it shows a little, you know, people being humble to each other, you know, and, and respecting each other. So let's get into the topics today. The first one is saying sorry if you're wrong, admitting that you're wrong, or giving credit where credit's due and telling your partner they were right. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the big one. And this is not just in relationships. This is with people in general. You know, some people have egos and or, or not egos or, you know, they don't want to feel ashamed or whatever it may be. And they just can't, you know, take themselves to say, I'm sorry. They, they can't say, listen, I'm sorry for what I did. I was wrong for what I did. Or uh, you were right. Or, or you know what? Yeah. You know, honey, you were right. Or to the other person, you were right. You, you know? were right. It, you know, it, t it takes a lot of guts. Uh, it takes, you know, you being humble, then you'd be able to admit this to somebody. You know, say that you were wrong. And, and listen, nobody is perfect out there. So we have all had flaws. We've all been wrong in situations. And what have you done to correct that situation or, you know, apologize and being genuine about it too as well? Because then you're going to say, I'm sorry. You know, and if you hear that a million times from somebody, it might get older. It might not mean as much to you as mm -hmm. being genuine and admitting to this. Now, this can go in a number of different ways from, uh, listen, I know the directions. We're going to make a left here. Uh, no, we're not, honey. We're going to keep going straight. And the left was the right right way. And then you find out afterwards. And then I told you so. That's the, that's the famous line afterwards, right? <laughs> that happens right? to us all the time. Right? So, this, yeah, this, this, this is an example of what, what yeah. happens to us all. Like, oh, it's this way. Like, oh, no, it's this way. And then you, you just be hard-headed about it and you go your right right way, the way that you, you thought it was right. And at that point, you find out, listen, it should have been the other way. And then The you other know, way was five minutes shorter. Right. And then, and then you're like, you know what? You were right. I'm sorry. You know, and, you know that makes your, your partner feel good. Um, also, give them a credit where credit's due. Like, hey, listen, you were right about this. You know, going into a situation or a business deal or anything else that your partner helps you out with, you know, if you're going to make a decision or first they say, like, Hey, we should be doing this. And you're like, nah, I don't think so. And then find out down the road, you know, hopefully it's not a hard lesson you learn, but mm. you admit to them, hey, listen, you were right. Had some hard lessons. So it, it's, it's really big to do this, right? It's a big person and it takes a big person to do this with their partner or with other people, like I said. But it is something you need to do. It's something that will humble you. It was something that will, you know, make your partner respect you, you know, and in reverse to this reverse like don't listen that's a big reverse when they tell you that you're right make sure that you don't turn it around and be like see i told you i was right i knew i was right and then badger them yeah. you know you don't want to badger them because they just gave you credit yep. and just take it just take the credit and be like all right you know i told you so or you use it as ammo yeah. down the road yeah. like listen I told you not to do this then. I told you, I told you, I told And they've already admitted to you, look, you know, I'm wrong. I, you know, you were right about this. You know, nobody wants that. And that actually makes people fear, in fear of saying, I'm sorry again. Because again, they yeah. think that they're going to have it thrown back in their face. So they don't want to admit to it. And they just get angry or, you know, pent up, you know, frustration against you or whatever it may be. So it's really important for you guys to accept the apology Okay, you might have to do a little giggle like I told you so and just bumped you, bumped the person, but let them know that you were just joking around. And make sure it's not a serious situation because people can get really upset about it one way or another. Yeah, and don't that, let it turn into an argument. Don't let it turn into an argument. It should not be an argument, you know, especially if somebody says, you know, I'm sorry. You know, at that point, now if it's really drastic and stuff like that and you need more than I'm sorry, then that's what it is. But this is something basic, like I said. This is something like directions or, you know, maybe it was some mistake that you were going to make in the relationship and stuff like that. And they, they try to tell you the right way. And then you found out it was wrong. And at that point, you know, you went back to them, you know, apologize genuinely and let them know that they were right. And that will make them feel better about it for sure. And that will make them want to be more open with you. 
So let's go on to the next one because this is another big one, right? Now, a lot of questions come in from, from people to us. How do you guys keep a relationship going like you do? It seems like you guys are just now dating, like you just started dating. Like, we act like that when that, we go out. Yeah, so people ask all you know, the time. We like, still kiss and we still hold hands yeah. and we still hug and you know, when we walk, we walk together. I might just put my arm underneath his arm. Like it's, you know, usually after 12 years, you don't do that anymore. It kind of yeah. just fades away, but it's important that it doesn't fade away. So yeah, people do become complacent in the relationships. You know, we talked about this before, maybe letting themselves go or whatever it may be, but you know, people, you know, always get to this place and they're like, you know, how do we go back? Right, because that's a hard one because that spark's just gone or, you know, like I don't feel maybe the same way or you start thinking in your mind like, you know, maybe I, I don't feel the way for this person that I did before. And at that point, you know, our advice to you guys would be, listen, go back to the beginning of a relationship, right? So when you guys first met, okay, in a positive way, when you guys first met, what drew you guys together? What was it that ignited that spark and that flame? What, what did you, why did you think this may be my partner? This is the person that I want to be with, right? This is something that I want to be a part of. And, you know, and sometimes we get lost with that through time because work or kids or, you know, just stress, daily life stress, mm -hmm. you know, especially with COVID-19 or whatever else is going on. You're thinking about all these different things, but you're not really thinking about your partner or you and your partner are having a stressful time. So it's always good to look in the beginning. So when you guys were in the beginning, what was that attraction? What really like did it for you? And go back and do those things. Was it that you guys went on date nights? You know, you know, I think for me and John, just a couple things. I mean, me, me and him both, we both like music. Um, you know, we like to dance and we like music. So we still, to this day, maybe not for the last few weeks, I feel a little under the weather, obviously. But um, to this day, we still go out, you know, at least once or twice, you know, twice a month at least and go somewhere like whether it's like, you know, a, a bar or a nightclub or wherever it might be, have a drink or two and, you know, dance with each other still. And, you know, I think that that, that honestly, for me specifically, that brings back like a lot of memories and it kind of ignites it for me with him, you know, cause we used to always dance back in the day. Like, you know, we go to all the clubs and we dance and, you know, we'd have a good old time, stay out till five, six o'clock in the morning. Oh my goodness, those were the days, right? Don't have to do that. <laughs> uh, and with the pandemic and everything that has went on and the way that life has changed, if you guys can't do that per se, let's say it's dancing, you guys it can always do it at home. It could be anything. You know, set something romantically. But Maybe it's a dinner at home or something, you know, and you guys just spend some quality time together there, you know, or maybe it's vegging out and watching Netflix and, you know, eating popcorn and snacks. It could be anything. I don't know. I don't know what it was for you guys, but I mean, specifically for us, we have like our dancing and our cuddles and all that stuff. You know, and it doesn't have to be a <clears throat> physical thing. People always drive back to physical you know, it, it could be a mental attention thing that what you guys were drawn to each other, you know, whether it was, hey, listen, we both had a love for books and that's kind of how we got together. You know, for me and Sharice, the, the real thing that really kind of got us together was we lived in the same area. So we met each other in Tampa, but we lived like 45 minutes away, both of us at the time. Never, so, never landed. So and it was like, you never really meet somebody that lived around the area, stuff like that. Not so, someone that looked good. Right, right, right. <laughs> so that's kind of what it was. So remember, go back to the origin of the relationship, the positive part that drew you guys together and made you guys want to be a couple, wanted, you know, want, you guys wanted to share time with each other. You guys shared this passion and this love in something, all right? And you will go back and you guys will both probably love that thing again. And maybe that might reignite the spark or have that conversation again of what brings you guys together. Okay, so these are just some tips and tricks from me and Sharice to you guys. I wanted to help you guys out. We need to love more and hate less, okay? Yes. And relationships, they should be everlasting, not short-lived. Uh, it's too easy for people to get out of relationships these days with social media, divorces, and all this good stuff. Keep trying, guys. Don't Keep give up. Keep the eye on the prize. Want to be in that At relationship. At least try again. You know, you know? gosh. You don't do force it. So easy. it. You don't have to force it. Don't but, force it. But don't, don't just... Throw it out the window. Make sure you guys are trying your best. Just because you can swipe left. Yeah. Or right. If, you, if you've given your best and they're not putting their best foot forward, then it might be time <laughs> to reassess. But at most parts, they will try usually to put their best foot forward and hopefully that gets you guys back on track. Mm -hmm. So this has been another Cupid's Corner with me and Sharice. 
We appreciate all you guys for tuning in. We love you guys. Thank you guys for all the support. Uh, if you guys have any questions or you guys want to hear about some different topics, please DM us. Make sure you guys are locked into our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you check out the website, www.tightmedicalcenter.com. And our YouTube's got all kinds of great videos, plus all these Cupid's Corners for you guys to check out. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you guys next Cupid's Corner. Thanks again, guys. Mwah.